tendency, cluttered souls carry this irritability, this resentment, this floating anger that, that fits on people like Velcro everywhere you go. You've seen that in our marriages. You've, you've seen that in, a, in our families, haven't you? Mom or dad gets like, and, the, and it's not even about you, but that, that anger just sits down because of these cluttered souls. So as almost a theme verse for like whole these uh, four weeks, <coughs> we looked at Ecclesiastes 4.6. Better is one handful with tranquility than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. If you're not a believer, if you're not religious, if you're on your way to God, <coughs> a lot of times you think Christians are against things. We aren't. We, we say, enjoy, really enjoy your one handful. Be content with your one handful. Just revel in your one handful instead of trying to chase after two. And all it adds is toil and futility. So be content, revel with the one handful that God has given you. We start off with week one saying just the accumulation of stuff, less is more. And I'd love this to be like a theme of our lives. We've written down there at the back 2,090, 2,090 pieces of articles of stuff you've either gotten rid of or given away. I'm hoping that number is going to reach 3,000. I'm going to keep that, that, that board up there for next week, even though it's not the same series, just in case this last week. You're still getting rid of stuff. You have boxes of stuff. And I'm going to add to that number. Can we get that thing up to 3,000? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so anyway, keep on purging, people. Keep on purging. Simplicity. Less is more. Then we talked about how would your time be best spent if God were in charge. We looked at a verse that said, hey, could you, wait, wake up, wake up. The verse said, wake up. Don't sleep through your life. The days are evil. Well, why are days evil? Because they suck the time out of you. They, they, with useless and, and, and minutia that, that doesn't matter, that doesn't pour into the key relationships that you have. And then, last, uh, so we ask you then to plan your weeks. Plan ahead by listening to God. And listen for these interruptions too. And we've been tracking on that when there's been at least 27 interruptions, 27 days that people have sat in, in, and prayed and listen to God for what they're going to do. Please add to that number. Last week, we simply talked about spend less. <laughs> In a consumerism culture, wow, that's just so hard, isn't it? It is just so hard just to spend less. But it's not just for the purpose of spending less to amass more things. It's simply so you can live simply, so you can have the freedom to be outrageously generous. Just every generous everywhere you go. And we want to celebrate our counterculture. And that's why we're tracking it with numbers back there. Not that numbers are the thing. But I want to go, every time you wipe off something, I ask God two times this week what I should be doing. And, and I write, I just want you to celebrate that. That we are different. This is a different counterculture that we're in. So, new subject today. New subject. A little bit of a gulp for me. I had a whole other subject planned. I was writing it down. And those of you who are believers, you know what I'm talking about. It's just like, and I go, God, what would you want me to do? It was like pressed in on me that he said, Dave, talk about this. Didn't hear the voice, but it was in my mind. I couldn't get it out of my mind. I'm going to talk about this. So I switched it up. <laughs> and whenever that happens, can I just say, I know it usually means this is zeroing in on somebody, a hand of people. A handful of people. So we're going to talk about soul clutter. Our souls carry burdens that we were never intended to carry. Let's say that again. Our souls carry burdens that we were never intended to carry. Um, before we, we, we can work on all kinds of, of, of clutter. Our house can be cleaner. Our time is more efficient. Our credit cards can be zero. But we still have a sense of clutter and manyness. Like that video was sh showing, it, it just, it presses in on your souls. And so we're going to deal with that today. We're not just going to talk about it. I'm going to give you opportunities to deal with it. Uh, can I say, uh, before we jump in here, I have to do a little bit of Theology 101. Theology 101, and so if you are like an advanced theology, this is like, don't sleep through this. I'm going to get to the practical part in a moment, all right? Okay, but I think there needs to be some definitions because there's a lot of folks here that come, just check out what God's like. Just like, they, they kind of do, well, what is this God thing all about? And so we need to sort of catch everybody up. So here we, here we go. Theology 101. We all have desires to do good that, that have gone undone. That we all have desires. I want to do good, but I, I 
don't do it. There's a good I want to do, and I just don't do. But this Christmas, I was, uh, I was doing some uh, secret shopping for my uh, lovely, uh, lovely family. I was downtown. I had time. And there's a guy who said, hey, you know, you know, got a buck for a coffee. And, and often I walk by. Often I turn the other way. I had the time. I had the ability. And I walked by, and I thought, no. Why am I walking by? I, so I go back and said, what do you need? He said, what do you mean? He said, well, I could, there's a Tim Hortons right there. Can I get you coffee? He said, yeah, large double-double. Sweet. So I went and got a large double-double and just sat and, 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 and said, how you doing? And he didn't want to talk. He just went off. That's cool. That's cool. But then after that, you think, oh, Dave, you should feel so good. <laughs> I just felt like how many times have I got the tap? I knew I should be doing something, but I didn't do it. Uh, we all have desires to do good that have gone undone. We all have fallen short of our own standards. You know, we all have standards in life, don't we? Or at least sometimes, <laughs> no matter who you are, you have some kind of standard. And that standard, you even fall short of your own standard. <laughs> I know I love to be an honest person. I am an honest person. <laughs> I remember when I was a little kid, I hated spelling. Ah! I hated spelling, despise spelling. <laughs> ah, spelling. And I know my mom tried. She put words up all over the walls, tried to get me to do it. And I remember one day I took my speller home. Evil Dave. Okay? And I came. I said, I don't like spelling. And I chucked it down the ravine. As I saw it go, I realized I probably could not retrieve that. And I had a decision to make. When I went home, I could have said, Mom and Dad, I didn't like spelling, so I chucked my speller. <laughs> Uh, I decided to go the whole year without my speller and just sort of forgot to bring it home. And guess what? That pressed on me. And, and the, the guilt of that and the, you know, you know what that's like, right? And guess what I got in spelling that year? Guess what? Per, they did percentages back then. 34%. I thought it was good for not having a speller. <laughs> But it's interesting. I am an honest person, but, you know, a, a moment. And then you have to live a life of dishonesty. And I've fallen short of my own standards again and again. I have. I'm just being honest. Maybe you've kept your standards, but I haven't. <laughs> it's interesting. The Bible has a word for that. When we don't, we don't carry our own standards, when there's good things that we want to do that we don't do. And it might surprise you what that word is. James chapter 4, verse 17 says, If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, what's it called? It is sin for them. What? Okay, I knew you shouldn't have come to church. The sin word. Well, you might not know what that's what it is. It's not about being a murderer. It's not being, you know, uh, causing genocide. It's just if you want to do something good and you actually don't fall through on that. Not only that... Not only that, guess what? Our God, our creator, has standards also. And guess what? His standards are better than mine. <laughs> That's a shocker. His standards are higher than mine. His standards are amazing. And guess what? He made me to be able to work a certain way. Like, I'm created. I'm manufactured. I remember cleaning up my basement once. I was cleaning up with a vacuum cleaner. And there's like, I, there's a big puddle of water. And I thought, I thought I've seen that somewhere before, them people vacuuming up puddles of water. <laughs> Haven't you? <laughs> and I heard, psh, psh, <laughs> and there's this wonderful smell of burning electronics. <laughs> and they went, <laughs> yeah, I busted the whole engine on the thing. <laughs> it wasn't meant to suck up water. <laughs> It wasn't made to suck up water. It breaks if it sucks up water. <laughs> I am created by a holy God. I am not meant to break his standard. I'm not created to break his standard. In fact, if there's something in me, if I do that, it just causes soul clutter, and it weighs on me and presses on me. We can push it away, push it down. In fact, this is what we've all fallen short of God's standards. Romans 3.23 says, everyone has sinned. Your pastor has Everyone has. Everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standards. Hmm. We're not meant to carry this sin. And sin falls short, and it also separates 
You know what that's like. It separates you from who you should be, separates you in your marriages, separates you from your kids. It's just that little irritant all the time, isn't it? A little bit of dishonesty, that little bit of criticism, that little bit of slander. It separates. Interesting, it separates us from God, too. Isaiah 59, 1 to 2 says, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to say, nor is ear too dull to hear. In other words, they're calling out to him, God, why don't you help? God, why don't you help? God, why don't you help? Is it that God can't do it? Or is God deaf? He can't hear. And then the solution is here. But your iniquities, is another word for sin, has separated you from your God, and your sins have, have hidden his face from you, so he will not hear. There's, it, it just separates us from the people that we love the most. So we've fallen short. We've all been separated. We need to be reconciled. A lot of people talk about God, and you'll hear this in some churches, as if God were the great grandfather. Aren't grandparents awesome? Amen. Yeah. Can, can I hear an amen for grandparents? Yeah. Uh, we actually have some of them here. Yeah. And I know how you work. I know. I know. You know, the parents go boom, 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 and you go, ha, 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 ha. Anyway, <laughs> and you help them out, and you feed them other things. Here's sugar, rah, 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 and go back to your parents, right? Some people think God is like that. Oh, you cute little guy. I'll forgive you. Here's some sugar. <laughs> Unfortunately, God is also justice. Maybe it's fortunate. You wouldn't want people to get away. You would want a Hitler to actually pay justly somehow. But we've all fallen short, so we all have to pay. This is why the Bible is so full of those animal sacrifices in the beginning. It was like the, he had to tell you, God had to tell you, sin has a price to it, has a price to it, has a price to it. Year after year, death after death, sin has a price to it. Somebody has to pay. This is why Christians, by the way, we celebrate the cross. Because when Jesus came to the cross, it wasn't just that he was tortured, mistreated. Yes, that's true. But guess what? His ultimate sacrifice paid for me, your pastor. All my junk, all the things that had to be paid for, I got paid for. I got paid for because of the cross. And so we wear crosses. Easter is a big deal. Jesus paid my debt. He beat the works of the evil one, basically neutered the evil one. He brought healings for our soul. He brought freedom from guilt, brought reconciliation from, to the Father all through the cross, the cross, the cross. So sin is falling short of our own standards and ultimately God's standards. Sin separates us from whom we're meant to be and from our God. Sins were paid for on the cross by Jesus. Well, who can appropriate this? Who can, who can get this? Who can, who can say yes to God? Well, is it everyone? No. Is it you have to work harder? No, God made a choice. And this is what actually the book of Romans is all about. God made a choice. He said, this is my choice about what it's going to take. It's going to take faith, a step of faith. And that's it. And that's the theological background for our soul clutter. We walk around with the pressing of sin that we've done, that people have done to us. And it's the burden we carry. Well, great. That's awesome news. A to go, Dave. That was such an encouraging news. <laughs> there is a solution. In fact, I'm going to give you two solutions that we're going to look at. And we're going to actually dig into one piece of Scripture a little bit deeper, a little bit slower. It's in Psalm, Psalm 32, 1 to 5. Psalm 32, 1 to 5. And it goes like this. This uh, is mentioned at the first of Psalm of David. And so certainly he would know about sin pressing in on him. And this is what he says. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven. Isn't that awesome? Forgiven. Forgiven. I'm not sure how that feels to you. Forgiven. Whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin that the Lord does not count against them in the spirit. And in whose spirit is no deceit. This that 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 sort of phrase that no deceit is going to be is going to come up in the New Testament equivalent to this. So pay attention to that one. Isn't it blessed? Aren't you happy? Aren't you fulfilled? Isn't it wonderful to be forgiven? Yeah, thank you. I needed somebody to say that. Kudos. All right. Yeah, the little baby was she was like she's gonna grow up Pentecostal. Awesome. <laughs> Isn't it awesome to be forgiven? 
And he says, blessed are those who, whose spirits know deceit. In other words, I'm not holding things back. And it goes in and says it here. When I kept silent, my bones wasted it away. That's the carrying of this weight. I just, I just kept it in. I pushed it down. And I was just, my whole body was just being stretched. My bones were wasted away though through my groaning all day long. And then on top of that, God was pressing on him too. For day and night, my hand was heavy on my, my strength was sapped as the heat of the summer. <sighs> And aren't you glad that the psalm doesn't end there? <laughs> Is it a lot? Too bad for you. <laughs> but it continues. Then, instead of being deceitful, then I acknowledged my sin to you, talking to God. I did not uncover up my iniquity. I confessed my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. Just, and then it goes back almost like to the first of the psalm. Blessed is the person that is forgiven. Isn't it awesome? I was pressed down, pressed down, and I'm carrying and this weight. And guess what? I decide to confess it to you. I decide not to be deceitful. I decide to be fully honest with you, God. I'm going to just bear my soul to you, God. And guess what? You forgave the guilt, and it's gone. Oh. Amen. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll work on that. So the solution to the clutter of sin is confession. The solution to the clutter of sin is confession. Psalm, I tried to push it down. My, my soul became, but, but I confess that. It's interesting. The New Testament talks about this. A letter written to Christians. This is not to people on the way to God. This is for us Christians. It says, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. Isn't that interesting? It refers back to the Psalms. It's a deception. We're not honest with ourselves. We're not honest with God. If we say, no, I'm good. I don't have any problems. I'm better than everybody else. <laughs> you know the Bible says, liar. <laughs> You're lying to yourself. You're lying to God. <clears throat> and the truth is not in us. I, I, I hope you, you realize, does that make some people feel good? Like, you're not the only one. You're not the only one that messes up. We're all glorious messes. And then, is there a solution? Yes. If I confess, if we confess our sins, he's faithful. Uh -huh. That means he does it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. We're going to find out how many times we do it. Again, 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 again. And just. In other words, he's not a grandfather. There is a just payment for this. The just payment is Jesus on the cross who bled and died and carried the weight of my sin, the wrath of God against my sin. That was all poured out on Jesus. And so now... He, he, God is now just. He's not just being a, guy, a good grandfather. He is just to be able to forgive us. And will forgive us our sins and purify us. <laughs> all clean. From all unrighteousness. We confess our sin in general and enter into God's family, don't we? Those of you who are, are, are Christians, you, you know that was one of the entrance points. That's the A in our ABC. You have to admit your sin. That's a confession of sin. That's why we do it. B, we believe that Jesus died and rose again to take away the sin. C, you commit yourself to Christ. You need to do that to enter into to God. Every balloon we have up is somebody has confessed their sin to God and said, God, I'm a mess. I need your help. But guess what, Christians? We think that we only had to do that once. We think we just had to do that once and it's done. And we never confess again. <laughs> Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 says, Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus, uh, uh, Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. How did you receive him? Confessing sin. How should you continue to walk in him? Confessing sin. <laughs> in fact, there's this healing to our souls. It declutters us. Sometimes we confess to the Father, as in the Psalms. Sometimes we confess to each other. James 5.16, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other, so that you may be healed. Not so that you may be saved again and again and again and again. No, no. You don't, your, your salvation is not related to how many sins you remember. It's done once for all, but that your soul might be healed. A prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So true confession has actually follow-up actions. Have you offended somebody in your sin? Well, go and apologize to them. It's not just, just not you and God. You've taken something, go and pay it back. If, if, you've, if you've slandered, go and, go and apologize. But the solution to the clutter of sin is this confession, to clear out your soul. And we're going to give you an opportunity to do that. 
if it's just silence in your own heart, just to say, God, I carry this, this weight, and I need to get this straight with you. Maybe some of you today will say, I'm not sure if, if just talking to God, I m- might need to talk to someone else. And some of us will be back in the prayer corner to be able to pray with you. Well, that's sin that we've done, but how about sin that has been done to us? We've been lied to. We've been stolen from. We've, been, we've had uh, people be unfaithful to us. We've been belittled. We've been slandered. We have been hurt over and over again, haven't we? I have. I believe the solution to clutter of sin against us is forgiveness. I'm going to look at our, 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 our scriptural passage for that. It's Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. It's interesting. Uh, Peter somehow sees that God is, Jesus, is merciful. So he says, then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive somebody who sins against me? <laughs> I wonder if this is like a real thing, right? <laughs> this person bugs me again and again and again. Right? Do you know that? Don't put up your hands. Don't nudge the person next to you. All right. Amen. Deal is, the rabbis had talked about this. Judaism was, had the whole idea of, of honored forgiveness. In fact, one of the rabbis uh, was, was said, you should forgive someone three times over the same offense because guess what? If they sin once, you forgive them. If they hurt you the second time, you forgive them again. Third time, this is a habit and they're going to hurt you again so you don't forgive them after three because it's a habit. It's a, and so Peter knew this. And so guess what? He was saying, I know I, Jesus is always like better, all right? <laughs> I'm going to do the better part. Okay? It should be seven times. I'm going to double it, add one, perfect kind of number. That's how many times you forgive, right, Jesus? He's looking for the pat on the back. Here to go, Peter. You finally got something right, right? (laughs) (laughs) Tee-hee. Matthew 18, verse 22. No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. You just hear everybody go, oh, Great. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Actually, this is such a really cool story that ties in with Genesis and the, the sins of Lamech, but we don't have time to talk about that. If you want to look into it, that's awesome. Okay. Basically, Jesus was saying this. There is no discernible limit for granting forgiveness. He said, well, why? That doesn't seem fair. That's not fair at all. That doesn't seem wise. You're just letting them get away with everything. They're just kids. They're going to run over you. And that's true. There's answers. There's answers. But Jesus decides to explain now why we should forgive that many times. And he tells a story. Again, our time is running out. We don't have time to, to read the whole story. But basically, a king was offering, uh, had, had, was settling debts. And there's one of his servants came, and it says he owed, get this, 10,000 bags of gold. Now, they figured this out. You know how much 10,000 bags of gold is? Millions. It just, in the NLT, it says millions. Guess what? They figured out this was more money than was in print of all of Galilee, of all of Judah, of all of, of the whole entire area. This was more capital than was actually in circulation. <clears throat> was the debt big? Yep. <clears throat> Would forgiving it help at all? Could he work this off? Not in a gajillion lifetimes. And so he was about to be thrown in prison, and he begs for mercy, 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 mercy. And the king says, okay, because you begged for mercy, I will forgive you. And does that relate, right? That relates. Every time, oh, man, every mistruth I've told, every look of lust, every gossip or slander that came out of my mouth, every misspent dollar, everything that I did wrong, this creates this huge debt to God. And guess what? Oh, God, have mercy. He forgives it all. Your pastor is forgiven. And yeah, that's big. (laughs) I'm not sure if you don't, your pastor, that's big forgiveness. Huge debt. And so the guy goes, and there's somebody that owes him about $3,000. I think the money is interesting because it doesn't say $2. $3,000. It's a lot of money. It is a lot of money, right? Somebody hurt him enough that it was a big deal. It wasn't $10 million. It was a big deal. This wasn't a little thing. So the guy said he took him by the neck and tried to choke him. 
And he throws him in prison and says, I won't forgive you. And then <clears throat> the king turns around and hears that and basically says, how dare you? I forgave you so much, and you decide not to live a life of forgiveness. Hmm. Interesting. We carry the weight of unforgiveness on our soul. You and I, we all do. Little bits of it hang on like dust in the corners. Some of you are carrying heavy loads of unforgiveness. And I know you want to take off and run away right now. We've got people on the doors. It's okay. I think the first thing we do is pray forgiveness. There's some things that you just can't do but to say, Father, I forgive them for, name the offense. I've had people that have hurt me so bad. I've gotten ulcers over it. <laughs> Remember once, once somebody said, Dave, you should see all the things this one person's putting on Facebook. Look it up. I said, I'm not going to look it up. <laughs> you nuts. <laughs> so I'm going to say, God, I forgive them for their slander. Praying forgiveness is not becoming their friends. Interesting. Uh, when, when, when King Saul and King David were, were having it out in the wilderness, King Saul said, listen, forgive me. I've done you wrong. I've done you wrong. And David says, I will accept your forgiveness. And King Saul's come back to the palace. And David wisely said, no. <laughs> I don't have to be around you. I don't need to be your friend. I don't, don't need to be your closest friend. I don't need to be hurt again and again. I don't need the wounds to be ripped open. But God, I will forgive you. You don't have to actually go and talk to them. And, 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 and in fact, it's, it's interesting. What happens, Dave, if they're not sorry, if they're still not sorry for what they did? I'll give you a solution, a situation. Jesus is dying on the cross, and they're like <laughs> mocking him and about to stick a spear in his side. And guess what he says? Father, for give them. Were they sorry? No. Were they continue? Yeah. It was an act of forgiveness. It was an act of forgiveness. Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. You don't. Praying forgiveness is not becoming friends. It's for your own soul. Praying forgiveness releases the offenders to the hands of God. Well, aren't they just going to get away with everything? Well, guess what? You don't get to make those choices. <laughs> You get to now give the vengeance of that over to God. Romans 12, if it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Hear that? If you like to be a stir, if you like to be a poker, <laughs> listen to that verse. As far as it is, depends on you, please be at peace with everyone, especially in the community of Christ. Don't take revenge, dear friends, Don't, but leave room for God's wrath. For it's written, uh, my, it, it's mine to avenge. I'll repay, says the Lord. I'll, I'll take care of it. Release them into my hands. Father, I forgive them for their slander. I release them into your hands. And then the third thing I suggest, pray, forgiveness, praise a blessing on the offender. Matthew 5, 44, but I tell you, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Dave, I can't do that. I understand. Then pray for strength to do that. What's a blessing? What's a blessing? What do you want? Pray that they have whatever you want. I remember somebody helping me with this. There's a man that, that said just nasty things about me, told me I should get out of ministry. I was no good for it. Said horrible things about my wife. All kinds of wonderful things. <laughs> and I was holding on to that. But I didn't even know. It was a little dust bunny somewhere. So I asked God, who do I need to forgive? And his name came up. And so... Father, I forgive him. Father, I forgive him for the words he planted in my soul. I release him into your hand. What kind of blessing do I want? I pray for him help. I pray that God would draw close to him. I pray that his children would fall in love with you. Amen. It's funny what that does to your soul. It clears out the clutter. Some reason, it snips off something that you've been carrying with you. And it releases you from the clutter. 
I'm going to ask our worship team to come on forward. I'm going to invite you all to clear the clutter of your soul. Clear the clutter of sin by confession. As we sing, as we wait, as we listen, could you ask, Spirit of God, do I need to confess anything to you? And do it. If it's a weight on you, I'm going to go to the prayer corner, and I have some friends back there too. If you'd like to pray with a woman, there, there's a woman back there. If you would like to confess, I would hear that, and I would pray for you. I'm not a priest. I cannot absolve you. Only Jesus can. But as we pray for each other for healing, I will do that. Some of you need to clear the cl clutter of sin against you by forgiveness. You already know who you need to forgive. And during the silence of one of these songs, during as we pray, maybe you need just to say, okay, I forgive them for, I release them into your hands and pray a blessing over them. If you don't think you can do that, come on back to the prayer corner and we'll help you. Can I just say, this is, might be too heavy for some of you. I get that. You listen to God. That's it. And could you come out of this room lighter with less clutter in your soul? <laughs> could we all just come out a little lighter and simplify our lives? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the power of the cross. The power of the cross that took away my sin. The power of the cross that beat the work of the evil one. The power of the cross who puts me in relationship with the Father. The power of the cross that just absolves me from all my sin and gives me power to grant forgiveness. God, unclutter our souls this morning in Jesus' holy name. Amen.